Hey everyone, this is Mark Phillip at Studica, and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the scroll view and grid layout group components in Unity for some UI work. This is going to be a very basic introduction just to show you a couple of things about how to use these items. By the end of this project, what you'll have is basically something like this. If I run play, my scroll view populates with randomized colored UI image elements, and I can scroll up and down in the window here and see what they look like. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So first of all, let's make our canvas. Let's go up to Game Object UI Canvas. Now on the canvas, what we want to do is right click on it, choose UI, and choose Scroll View. Now this is the Scroll View object. What a Scroll View is is essentially a window that you can scroll up and down to reveal the contents, right? So it's just like reading a website or anything like that where you can scroll up and down and new content scrolls onto the screen. Uh, it's made up of several components. I'm not going to get too in-depth with these. Uh, I recommend if you're curious about these options, read the Unity documentation about scroll views. Uh, right off the bat though, one thing I'm going to change about this is I'm going to remove the horizontal scroll feature. I only want to be able to scroll up and down. I'm not concerned with scrolling horizontally right now. I'm going to leave all these other settings the same. And just to give you an idea of what the scroll view, how it works by default, if I play this and I click in here and drag and move my mouse, you'll notice the uh, bar on the right move. I can also click and drag the bar to move it up and down. I don't have anything in here yet, so you can't really tell that I'm moving, um, but it is working. Now, this is kind of small. I'm going to change my width and height to about 400. Now, depending on your aspect ratio, you might, you'll want to fine tune this to your liking. And uh, as with all things on the UI, I highly recommend using the Rect Transform tool to modify uh, rectangle sizes in the scene view. Now we want to expand the scroll view out in the hierarchy and expand out the viewport item and look at the content item here. So the content uh, child object for the scroll view is essentially a panel. Uh, it's just a Rect Transform. And this is where the scroll view will actually be scrolling. So generally what you would do is move the uh, height of the content down like past the scroll bar here. And you'll notice that the scroll bar gets larger and smaller as I do this. That's because we're adding more and more content by doing this. Now that's normally how you would use a scroll view um, with a fixed size or a size that you want to manually set yourself. However, what we're going to want to be doing is using a fixed size based on the number of elements in our grid. Um, but before we do that, let's go ahead and add our grid layout group. So while you have the content object selected in the hierarchy, go over here in the inspector, hit add component and type grid layout uh, group and choose the grid layout group uh, component. For the grid layout group, uh, we're going to have a cell size of 100 by 100 and a spacing I'm going to do a 5 by 5. Cell size tells the grid editor what size every grid element should be in the grid. So if I'm at 100 by 100, that means any UI element that goes onto this grid will be coming in at 100 by 100 uh, width and height. Spacing refers to the amount of spacing between grid elements. So I'm going to do five just to give a little bit of space between uh, every element that gets populated. I'm going to leave this data here uh, standard. If you're curious about these things, I recommend looking up the documentation on grid layout groups from Unity's website. The only other thing I'm going to add here, well, two more things, but the first one is going to be a content size fitter. And under vertical fit, we're going to go from unconstrained and set preferred size. Now what the content size fitter does uh, is essentially it works in conjunction with the grid layout group. And this component will be keeping track of basically what is being populated on our grid. And if the, if the items populated on the grid are exceeding the height of our content section, or essentially exceeding the maximum height or width of what we can scroll to by default, then it will make more room on the content section for us to keep scrolling. So basically what this means is that we can populate a thousand objects on this thing and have our content section automatically expand to accommodate those thousand objects. And the last thing we want to add is a, a script 
and we're just going to do add component and we'll call this populate grid and it's going to be a new script i'm going to do it in c sharp now before we do anything with the script one thing we want to do is create a prefab that we can instantiate so go up to game object um, go under UI and we'll just create an image prefab. I'm gonna leave it default, it's just this white square. I'm gonna drag and drop it into my project window here to create the prefab. And then I'm going to delete it from the actual scene. So we'll be using this to as basically the object that we're gonna spawn into our grid. Now to actually make this work, we have to open up the uh, populate grid inside of Visual Studio or Mono or whatever IDE you use. Um, I already have the code written. I'm going to copy it into here and I'll explain it real quick. So to start off with, we create a public game object called prefab. It's public, so it's exposed in the inspector. And this is what we're going to be populating our grid with. We also have a public int called number to create. This is specifying the amount of objects we want to create in the grid. So, you know, 10, 5, 50, 1000, whatever you want. And it's going to be exposed in the inspector because it's public. At the start of this uh, script, we're going to run the populate function, and down here is our actual populate function. So we start off by creating an instance of new object, and then we create a for loop that will run until we reach the number to create. And inside of this for loop, every time it runs, new object is going to be initialized to uh, an instantiation that's casted to a game object. And what we're instantiating, what we're passing to this function is the prefab object from up here. And we're telling it that the parent is this transform. Now this is important because the only way the, the grid layout manager knows how to organize things is if uh, UI elements are added to it as a child object. So this means that you could have a, a grid layout on here on the content, but if I threw a UI object onto the viewport object, then the grid layout group is not gonna know what to do with that. You have to make sure that it is assigned under the game object that has the grid layout script attached to it. Uh, any object you want to be part of the grid must be a child of the object that has the grid layout script. So when we instantiate, we make sure to tell it, hey, you know, your parent object is the object that has a grid layout script on it. And once it's instantiated, I want to randomize the color just to spice it up a little bit um, instead of populating the grid with a bunch of just white squares. Uh, so what this is doing is taking our newly created object, it's getting the image UI component from it, grabbing the color uh, property, and then it's randomizing a new color to throw onto it. And so if we save this, go back into Unity, uh, let the script compile real quick, we'll notice here under the uh, components that the populate grid now has a prefab and number to create uh, variables exposed in the inspector. For the prefab, we'll just drag and drop our image from down here into there. And for number to create, I'll just do like 20. And now if I play, there we go. We see a scroll view that is populated with 20 squares. And they're all randomized different colors. And you'll notice the padding in between. And it's very slight. Let me let's try to up our padding. Let's do like 20 by 20. This should be pretty large gaps. Yeah. So now we see there's a 20, basically 20 uh, units of space between every, ob uh, every item. We can also change the cell size. Like let's try a 50 by 50. And we'll do a spacing of five by five again. There we go. So that's even smaller. And you'll notice when I do this, you'll notice that we can't really scroll very far, right? But what about if we populated like 500 objects? Right now, this now we have this huge area we can scroll through. And that's because of our content size fitter, as I mentioned before, the content size fitter is basically saying, oh, you know, this thing is, uh, or sorry, it's saying that the grid, the objects on the grid have exceeded our boundary, you know, lengthen the boundary. Objects have exceeded the boundary again, lengthen the boundary. And it keeps doing that until, you know, it doesn't have to do it anymore. Uh, it's very nice, it's a very cool feature. Highly recommend doing that whenever you use a, a grid layout, unless you're doing a fixed size uh, grid. 
So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you learned the uh, basics of scroll views and grid layout groups in Unity. Uh, if you want, check out our other Unity content on our channel, or you can also check out our website, www.studica.com. If you are a student or educator, you can get a discount on all sorts of hardware and software from our website. Highly recommend checking it out, see if there's anything there for you. If not, no worries. Um, you know, again, thank you for watching and uh, hope you come back.